Hello everyone, today's video is how to fully disassemble the lower frame of the CZ75 SP01. So let's start by unloading the gun and take apart or remove the slide. There we go. We will not need the slide today. That the full the assembly of the slide will be for another day. All right, let's do the no-brainer of the grip. Okay, you're gonna need some punches to remove that pin here and this one there. This one retain the magazine break and this one retain the other part of the magazine brake, but also the entire hammer spring, also known as the main spring. So all you do is give some relief to that hammer and you want the hammer fully extended and you push on the bottom. And while you do this, you push that pin away. There we go. Now you want somewhere to put all your accessories and this is not going to come out because the brake is still in so you need to again release the uh, this part and remove pull out the brake so all the way you're going to push on the gun and there comes the brake now this spring is, a, is under a lot of stress so be careful to release it you can just push that way right here your thumb once you have that area secured. There you go. So we don't need this, we don't need the spring, and we need to remove the other part of the brake. There you go, and that pin is hanging out. So it's gone. All right, now we are going to go for the, the sear. And as always, I bring my little tool here. All right. Let's uh, zoom a little bit. To remove the sear assembly, the ejector assembly, you need to leave that little spring here. Nothing will move until this is up. And put it aside. Then at that point, you can release the safety and nothing goes anywhere. You pull, you wiggle, and there you go. So you are done with that part of the safety. You can remove the uh, sear. Now you need to remove the other side of the uh, Show you of the safety. There you go. So it is this way. You need to twist it and pull it. And here is an itty bitty part right there. You don't want to lose. And there you are. So put it aside. Now on the other side, you have another little part. And that other little part is right here. You have a spring and a small part together. Uh, all you have to do is really just grab it. Now there is a spring with it, so just be aware of it, but it's not under too much tension. And that is it. All right, let's put it aside. Next. The hammer. On the hammer, you have that little pin you need to push up. Oh, it came out very easily. I have been lucky on this one. Usually, you have to go onto the other side with pliers to go grab it. Now, it's freeing that pin that holds the hammer, and so you can push it from the other side right here, and it comes out very easily. It goes this way onto the gun. So you cannot go any further because of this protrusion at the end. 
and the little pin that went flying lock it right here anyway done and now you can very easily remove the hammer assembly in it you have two pins you have this one here that retain the uh, mainspring very easy to remove that pin this one is a lot harder to remove I will suggest not to do it you can but it is uh, uh, you have to force it out and force it back in now if you do a full clean on the gun you might want to do it once in a while um, so anyway what you can do now is to by pushing just slightly that pin here will come out and what you have is another pin you have this arm and the rest of the hammer assembly then let's go forward to the trigger assembly all right I want to put it into the frame there you go the trigger assembly is the trigger the spring here a pin that retain the spring and the trigger arm right there to do that on the sp one like many uh, uh, CZ you can just push the pin out um, you don't force it you just push it out and I'm afraid that one day this one might slide out but there is some force of the spring here constant force on that pin so it shouldn't just slide out but if you are worried about that Cajun Gunworks sells a pin which has a let's say this is the pin has a recess right in the center to hold the spring so the spring will stop the pin from sliding so again you just push it out and done so this pin is a little bit different because at the end here there is a protrusion to stop the pin from going this way but you can push it that way and now when I release my punch that spring is coming flying out but not much there's not that much tension there you go now some people say that pin, that spring uh, is one of the first thing to break on the gun at about thousand round I have almost two thousand on my handgun and still nothing I do have a spare in case of but I don't see any any stress or anything on that pin so I keep on using it now I can push on the trigger there you go and here is the entire assembly you can remove that pin very easily and put it back and by the way uh, while we add it the pin that's here is identical to that pin here and there those three are the same so when I'm going to reinstall that trigger assembly I'm going to use that pin here as a slave pin to hold the spring I don't have to build one or to buy one or anything I use the hammer because the hammer will be put back into the gun after the trigger all right let's continue now here to hold the trigger bar you have another spring so you need a screwdriver to remove that spring and it will give you access to the magazine magazine ejector here in that bolt and with some pliers so that's a tool you will need to have I'm going to remove that spring is not under any much tension there you go and the hooks go down it goes this way not that way down all right and then finally I'll show you here better angle with better light and right here is the spring that hold the mag magazine ejector there is the port and here comes the ejector magazine ejector this is an extended one and the frame is fully disassembled oh no never mind there is one more spring is this one here so the spring is hold by that pin here all right so I'm going to change pin there you are my hammer 
and everything is out. And that pin is really small. Where is it? That's how it looks like. And this is the part, the end that goes inside the gun. That's the end that goes outside the gun. The flat part outside the gun. And we had a spring, which is right there. And it goes into that, let's see if I can put this right here, there's a hole. In the hole you're wondering what it is doing. Come on, focus. Yeah. What is that hole doing here? It's the other side of what holding the pin right here. Now I'm having problem with focusing. Okay, so that pin goes here and down. Okay, so now this is the pin and the gun is absolutely done. So now is to put back everything and starting with the magazine protector. So it goes this way with the part you push here. Now if you are left-handed, it will go that way. But I'm a right-handed, so I can put it this way or that way. And there is a small notch uh, right there that you want to be able to see. If you slide the ejector, it will disappear. So you want it right in the opening. And then that's when it becomes a bit tricky, but you need the right tool, always the right tool for the job. And I use an emostat. And what I do is, because that part goes this way, I go right on top here. Well, I'm, I even take it upside down like this. And oh, the advantage of the emostat is you don't have to force it and keep it like this. You have teeth that will lock the emostat close for you. As high as I can, and as much of the tip of the emostat I can as well. That's going to be okay, a challenge sometime. It looks like I captured correctly, and it is locked into position. So now I'm going to slide it where it belongs. There you go. And I have to release my emostat. Okay, it's in place. I just have to push it down a little bit to make sure it's in and it is in. Now if I, I can play, yeah, I can play with the magazine ejector. Now, part number two is this one. Remember, it is a considered spring and it goes this way. Again, some pliers to move it into position. You go and finally our little screw again pliers will be a good tool to have and screw it in all right one little trick is to not screw it all the way once you screw it all the way you are going to create some tension or stiffness into that little spring with the hooks and it's going to go and it's going to fight against putting back the uh, trigger assembly. So you just keep it loose. Everything's in place, it's not going anywhere. All right, trigger assembly. First, what I have to do is to reassemble the spring right here. So I find my spring in my little box. There it is. And I need to remember that little pin from the uh, the, where is it? I believe that's the one right here. I'm going to try it to make sure this is the right one. And it goes right here into that hole. And it is the one, if it's perfect. See, you see it is flush with each side. So that's what you need. So you don't need to build one. All right. So now it's a part with a little bit of dexterity. It's not very hard. You want the long arm up because it's going to need to sit into that slot right here. 
and the small arm down into show you the small arm will go in this opening right there and when you do that you push it see you are in it's not going anywhere oops and then that pin is to go in the hole here there you go it's not going into the other side so I'm going to force it I'm going to push the spring down a little bit or the pin and push it on this side here there you go there and with that spring in position I'm going to put the trigger in this slot and the trigger there now the pin that's holding the spring is not into position yet I'm going to have to wiggle I'm going to try to view a better angle so what I'm going to do I'm going to go with a punch I'm going to push that pin out and the punch is going to go very easy in pushing everything out now then I can push the pin in now very important for that tool you need a ball at the end of that punch because what will happen is remember the pin that capture everything at the end has a hole here and is going to match the hole on the punch and when I put back the pin so the the punch is going to hold the spring when I put a pin right in the hole is going to drive me through it if it was a flat punch uh, let's see this one here this is a flat punch the end will slide all the time but the ball keep everything into position all right so I'm going to eject a pin and to do that to center everything I'm going to play with the spring in, until it's in position now remember the top spring needs to be into a slot here and I push the trigger down until my punch there we go go through okay so I'm through the little pin is out all right now I'm going to move back everything and what I do I'm going to slide that pin and you remember the uh, this pin comes out very easily so I don't need to hammer it much if I need to but it needs to be at the end of the punch and this way the hole on the the, uh, the trigger is so small that it will that you need that kind of punch to drive it through so I go through there we go there we go I'm going to hammer the pin so I'm hammering the pin slightly and when I know the hammer is almost going to reach the frame I know the pin is in it almost to the end so there I, I take it from the other side and voila it is done do it a few times and it's really easy and then I cannot forget to screw this Screw all the way tight and make sure that everything is working as it should be. Now back to the rear of the gun and I need to put the hammer assembly back. So remember we have this part and we have those with that very pin we use for the trigger assembly. And that's how the part goes into the gun. So you put this back here and that pin will hold everything. Now, once it's in the gun, even so that pin can be pushed in and out very easily, once it's in the gun, the side here are going to hold that pin in position. So I slide it back in, put that part on top of the hammer bar and now I can put back 
the pin here into that hole. So remember, the smaller end first. You push it all the way until it cannot go anywhere. And then now, to lock it in place, you have to put another little pin right here into the hole. And that pin is there. Those little pins look alike, but they are slightly different. This one is the shortest one. You slide it in there. And it goes into the hole. There you go. Oh, well, it went on its own. No resistance. Excellent. And once you put the block here, it's going to hold that pin down. This part here is going to keep the pin down. All right, so we're not done yet. Little pieces. This one, not very hard as long as you guide the spring into a little hole at the end and in the same time push down this way. So there is a small hole in the back, slide it in and push it into position. And I am in. Even easier than I thought it would be. Same thing on the other side. You want to get uh, that little piece right here and put it this way. And usually I use little, little nose prior pliers for this. Right there. Okay, so it's in. Okay, so now we have that part in. I'm going to put in the sear that is going to hold that part there and that pin down here together. And for this, you need to push it that way and down. There we go. Now, the right safety. Oops. Up, remember, and down. And the left safety, I should have had it ready. And slide it in, wiggle it, find its way. There you go. You can feel a connection here. But you cannot push it anymore because that little pen in the butt here is in the way. So I have to take a small screwdriver and that part has some dent on top. So I'm going to grab them and push it back. And while I'm doing this, I push the safety back in. Probably with my thumb holding the other side. So I pull back. There you go. That's it. Let's see if it works. Yep, safety works. Gonna work. That's it. The rest is a home run. Now what's left is that spring. This little part, which I don't know the name. The, let's see, the magazine brake. And those pins do not need any effort to be put in. Once they are in, they will be held in place by the, the grip. There we go for this one. And I'm going to insert the other end inside here by pushing onto the spring. There we go. And that part cannot come out because the magazine brake is holding it. So what I'm going to do, and if you want to avoid any headaches, is to take a small screwdriver, the size of that uh, hole here, and find the connection between that hole and that space. Because sometimes that part likes to move. So once you find, there we go the connection, you're going to keep the pressure down and that pin will go in sliding on its own very easily. All right, back to the grips. And 
that is it for the lower frame. Once you do it a couple of times, it will become a second nature, really. There is not much into it. Mainly all the question you had before, all the worries you had before about is it like this, is it the only way? You will know that's the way and that's it. Everything works. Well, until next time when I show you how to disassemble the sear block and another one with a slide. See you guys.